All right. Well, it is one o'clock, so I think we're going to go ahead and get started. I think we may have a few folks still joining us. Um, actually, or Patrick, do you want to wait? Maybe we'll give it one or two more minutes because I know we had quite a few were registered, so there may be more joining. So we'll give it maybe one more minute. All right, I think it looks like we may still have some joining and I want to be respectful of everyone's time and we have a lot to cover today. So we'll go ahead and get started. Um, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Erica Luce and I'm the manager of the adult education team within the Michigan Department of Labor and Economic Opportunity Workforce Development. I'm so glad to have all of you with us this afternoon. I, you know, as you all know, adult education is intended to be a stepping stone for our adult learners. It's not intended to be the end point, but instead to connect um, our students to that next step in their journey, whether that's going into the workforce or continuing on to post-secondary um, in, in advanced training. And, you know, that's been such an emphasis for within adult education is to making sure that when they're in our programs, that they're prepared for that next step. And, you know, we often get a lot of questions and have put a lot of resources into how best we can support our students in that transition. Um, and one of the things that's it's just such an exciting time right now um, within the state of Michigan, because there have been so many investments at the state level into you know, post-secondary education and training and state investments to make college and those training programs more affordable, more affordable. There's a lot of scholarships and supports that our students may be able to take advantage of. I know we have received some questions within our team um, and we think it's so important just to go right to the experts and to give all of you an opportunity here to hear directly from our colleges at the Michigan College Access Network and um, within the MyLeap Office of 60 by 30 about those opportunities that our students could benefit from. And so that's what we'll be doing in our session this afternoon is really walking through those opportunities. Um, we really hope that this is more of a starting point in the conversation and how better can we spread the word about these programs within adult education? How can we continue this conversation? Um, so at this point, I'm just going to kind of um, give a few housekeeping items before we jump in. Um, I did just want to say if we can make sure to keep all of our lines on mute just to cut down on that background, that background noise so we can hear our speakers um, today. We do have the session is being recorded, as you can see. And so for anyone that's not able to join today, or if you just want to go back, if there's something that you missed and you wanted to access the presentation after, you will have the ability to do that. We'll make sure that the slide deck, as well as a recording of today's session, are shared out. Um, we have plenty of time built in, we hope, at the end for questions. So if you have any questions and you, you want to enter those into the chat as we're going, feel free to do so. Um, just know that we'll we'll try to get through all of the slides and information, and then we'll answer questions at the end. Um, so as you can see, you know, our the agenda for today's session is really to talk about, you know, the, the 60 by 30, the goal to understand MCAN strategies um, that they've developed specifically for the adult students. 
Um, and then we'll get into the Michigan Re Reconnect scholarship programs, as well as some other financial aid scholarship programs. And then we'll end um, and close with it, addressing any questions that you may have. Um, so at this point, I'm going to turn it over to Patrick Brown from MPN. Thank you, Erica. It's so nice to be here with you and with everyone attending. Uh, my name is Patrick Brown. I'm the Director of Adult Student Attainment at the Michigan College Access Network. We're so happy to be here in partnership with our friends at MyLeap, the Office of 60 by 30, My Student Aid, and obviously the Adult Education um, Office within the Department of Labor and Economic Opportunity. And we're here to really share with you kind of the vision of 60 by 30 and some of the wonderful resources that are available, um, particularly around the adult learner population that many of you work with on a um, daily basis. There's been so many changes, advancements in a lot of these resources, and we felt like it was an important time to share this information with you. Um, I'm going to take a few moments to kind of lay the groundwork for why this is so important, why we think that this is such a critical time to think about um, creating access and opportunity for adult learners to accelerate into college and post-secondary opportunities, talk a little bit about what the data shows us. But first, I wanted to just remind you all of 60 by 30. Hopefully, many of you have heard of this goal. It's a statewide vision and strategy that's been in place now um, for about a decade in terms of um, lifting up a statewide strategy that says we need to increase the percentage of Michigan residents with degrees or post-secondary credentials to 60% by 2030. That's where we get this 60 by 30. We um, are here today to share with you that your work in adult education helps us and, and will continue to help us create that goal um, and meet that goal of 60 by 30. We think that that's an integral population of adult learners that we want to make sure that we have built that access and opportunity for. I've spent um, about a decade of my career in adult education and working with um, adult learners and I think what brings me to this conversation is thinking about how we create those pathways, those opportunities for all learners across our state. And all of us as stakeholders, um, Erica, and later as you'll hear from Michelle Cyrus and Nick Messing and their respective positions and their offices, and certainly us at MCAN, we're committed to that mission of lifting up access and opportunity and, and making sure that adult learners are included in that conversation. So let's talk about charting the course of 60 by 30. What does this mean for all of you as you're listening? What does it mean for the populations that you engage with as at, um, on a consistent basis? A little bit about the Michigan College Access Network. We are a statewide nonprofit dedicated to increasing college readiness, participation, and completion among Michiganders. We highlight that particularly among low-income students, first-generation college-going students, and students of color. We are coming into our 15th year of being and, and serving as a statewide convener to help post-secondary institutions, school-based programming, school districts, community-based organizations, adult education programs, think about ways in which they create that college-going culture and create those pathways for students to um, accelerate into those places. We think of ourselves and we're respected in across the state as a person and, a, and an organization that de-silos. We try to bring partners together to think about ways to do this. We do that through public policy and advocacy work. We also that do that through grant making and professional development. And so we hope to serve as a resource to you. And part of our um, new portfolio of work is adult student attainment. And within that is the population of adult learners that you may work with. And how can we think about leveraging all of those resources and engaging those adult learners in this conversation and thinking about what are the things that we need to have in place, resources, capacity building, uh, grant making opportunities that we can put in place to accelerate those learners. So we wanna support you. This is kind of a, a new endeavor for us as an organization, but with great partners like you, we know that we'll be able to imprint and impress into this population, that college going culture. We have a couple of pillars that are representative of our work, really focused on those within education, equity, and empowerment. 
And this is how, as a systems change organization, we view moving folks to and through college and helping institutions think about how we are serving students. And so when we think about education, our focus at MCAN and our focus in the 60 by 30 goal is college beyond high school as a prerequisite for success in Michigan's changing knowledge-based economy. And we'll talk a little bit about that today. Equity, ensuring that every student in Michigan has the opportunity to attend college and enact broader social change. You can see the priority populations. We've talked about them. Certainly adult learners fall within that priority population. Historically underrepresented, historically marginalized. If you go back and look at some of the numbers of what it, um, of the number of adult learners that have moved from our adult learning system into post-secondary, we want to quadruple that. We want to 10 times that. We want to um, make that as seamless as possible so our adult students have those opportunities available. And then lastly, empowerment. Certainly, we want to leave as a part of our work with you all and working with students is helping them to become uh, agents of change in their own lives, but also helping you become agents of change within your local communities um, to bring other partners into this fold. Everyone should know about 60 by 30. It's been, it's uh, good for our state. It's good for our local economies. It's good for our communities. It's good for our um, learners that we're reaching and their families. And so um, we want you to be a part of this network, a part of this movement, and uh, we want you to then go out and be champions uh, for that as well, and certainly your students. So when we think about 60 by 30, and we think about college going culture, and we think about how we can create these opportunities for adult learners, um, words are nice, but data really tells the story. And so I want to share with you a little bit about what the data tells us in Michigan um, around the inherent need for continued education beyond a high school diploma, high school equivalency. So a little bit of labor market information for you. Um, by 2031, 69%, almost 70% of all jobs in Michigan are going to require education beyond high school. You can see that broken it down at 35% for um, associate degree, 34% for a bachelor's degree or higher. This is what we're trying to share. We are sharing that our economy is shifting from a skills-based economy into a knowledge-based economy, where um, not only will uh, learners and workers be required to know the skills, but they'll have to be able to change with technology, change in scenarios, change in circumstances, upskill, and be able to make those transitions seamlessly. And, what is going to be at the root of that and kind of at the heart of all of that is a um, college degree or certificate. You can see here another uh, breakdown there, which is um, where those jobs are. I think on a later slide, we'll show kind of where the shifting jobs are, but this is where it's broken down. And you can see that that less than high school or the high school diploma percentage of Michigan jobs that will require post-secondary um, is a shrinking piece of the pie. And we want all of our students to be access um, to have access to the entire pie of success. Um, and so, part of our strategy and part of thinking about sharing this information is thinking about preparing a workforce for the future and preparing our learners as they exit out of adult education, continue into training or into college completion. What are the avenues that are going to be most successful for them um, to thrive and to live successfully as they go forward? You can see that this is not unique to Michigan. It's also unique to states all across the country. Our entire country is going through a movement here. Um, it is a culture shift. Uh, we are changing as manufacturing changes, that our economies of scale change, um, that different industries have changed, the introduction of artificial intelligence. Um, all of those things are, are changing the way in which our economic and jobs uh, structure exists in the United States. So on this chart here, you can see um, that Michigan is joining uh, many other states in um, needing a workforce that is highly educated, um, that has high development of skills, um, that has a degree, have high number of degrees, um, and you see that across the country. Um, and we believe that ed adult education, as you continue to work with those students, is an integral part of this, um, and that we want to 
um, create that culture and create that atmosphere within adult education programming to share information about college going and what that means. What does college mean? Uh, what are the indicators for success for a student in that space? What are things like affordability, accessibility? What are the resources now available? Um, particularly, I think about adult learners who many of them are first generation learner students. Um, they haven't had an environment um, that has been uh, encouraging for them for their education. They haven't found success in traditional pathways. This is all a part of that um, and a part you'll see that sea change shift um, across the country as well. And if you talk with the, your counterparts in other um, states, you will see that this conversation is happening uh, around the country. We also think that it's important to highlight um, the inherent uh, importance of a bachelor's degree or higher, associate's degree or some college and high school or less as it relates to employment changes over the last few years. And so as we think about the shifts of economies and think about occupations, and um, these are grouped by a variety of different um, experts as low skill occupational jobs, middle school middle skill occupational jobs, and high school occupational jobs. You will see that the largest increase is in those bachelor's or degree or higher high school occupational jobs. Those are positions that are needing advanced degrees, um, that are needing degrees um, of associates or bachelor's or higher. That number is increasing dramatically within our workforce. The positions that are not or that are decreasing the most are those that require a high school degree or less. And so the work that you all do is so critical and so important because not only are you um, impacting the change of the life of an adult learner on a daily basis that you do in terms of providing that social service support and the wraparound support and all of the good things that you do, helping them raise their children and their families, but you're also helping prepare them to um, move into different um, sectors and different uh, economic status. Um, by obtaining that high school diploma and then advancing into a more advanced degree, um, we are really providing them with life insurance, if you will. College is an insurance policy that will allow our adult learners to weather any economic storm or life challenge that comes at them. And so this is really important for us as we think about our adult learners, as we think about next steps, as they think about um, economic mobility, as they think about jobs versus careers. These are the things that are going to be really important for them to think about as they think about where they want to go, where they want to work, and the economy that they want to be a part of, and how they'll be successful over the course of their lifetime. Uh, this is another slide that we think is always important to share is that um, with increased education, increases earnings. It's just as simple as that. Um, the more you learn, the more you earn. Uh, and so it's really important. And at the same time, we see that those unemployment rates um, are the reverse of that in the sense that our positions that require a high school diploma or less are often the ones with the highest levels of unemployment. This is especially shown when we've had economic downturns. Most recently, the pandemic, uh, most recently, the Great Recession in the last 15 years. The populations that have that uh, smaller degree of success or that some college, no degree or high school diploma or less are the ones that are most adversely impacted in those scenarios. They earn less and they are at a higher um, opportunity where they're displaced from the workforce if something um, in our economy shifts or changes. And the more you go on this scale, the more success you have, obviously, the more um, uh, kind of cushion you have, if you will. Um, so this is really important. It, it's, it's about the economy. It's about the educational uh, opportunities that a student has available to them. As it relates to Michigan, Michigan produces a hot 50 job report. Um, the latest iteration came out in September and it's projected through 2032. These are the top industries across our state um, that are trending in the top 50. Uh, and so it's really important to look at as we'd encourage you to look at it as a tool, but 90%, 90% of the 
or 45 of the Michigan's top 50 jobs require some sort of formal learning past high school, a degree or a certificate. That's really critical and important as we think about the trajectory of learners as they're exiting the adult education system, pivoting into college or post-secondary or training, um, what that looks like for them. The next 10 years indicate that um, those top jobs that they're looking for, the high paying jobs, the ones most in demand are going to need that formal learning past high school. Um, and then 84% of those jobs listed on that Michigan hot job report will require a bachelor's degree or more. Um, and so this is the landscape. This is the um, trajectory, if you will, of where we go in Michigan. And I think what's so exciting is that today's presentation and the work that we have planned ahead is to really focus of how do we build that pipeline and pathway to meet um, these numbers and to have uh, great success for learners in these numbers. It's a long way to go from adult basic education to an associate's or bachelor's degree. Um, but the college pipeline and pathway has changed so dramatically in the last two years in terms of accessibility, affordability, college access, um, and what it will take a, for a learner to be successful. So I've been in your shoes where you hear all this data. It seems overwhelming. It seems a little daunting, but I'm excited that there are some opportunities and, and things available now for adult learners to reach some of these thresholds and milestones that have never existed before. Um, Kind of uh, as I come to a close on my uh, piece of this is that I just want to share with you where we sit in Michigan. So we've got a 60 by 30 goal. We sit right about in the middle. Um, obviously, we want to be the not only the best of the Midwest, but the best of the nation. We're slightly ahead of Ohio, which I think is always a good thing to be slightly ahead of Ohio. But we would certainly love to be where District of Columbia, Massachusetts, Colorado are, and certainly surpass the United States average here as well. So when we think about this, we are thinking about what this means for our state. We want to be Michigan proud. We've got um, wonderful programs created, the Community College Guarantee, Michigan Reconnect. This is about upskilling and scaling our economy, but it's also most importantly about providing quality education for our citizens that live within Michigan and keeping them in here in Michigan so that they grow, that they have families here, that they um, build um, out businesses and that they're invested in their communities. And um, we see education really as the catalyst to be able to do all of those things. And it's really important that we understand where we sit um, year over year and where that um, is in connection to um, other, other states as well and nationally. So you also will see where we are currently in this graph and where we need to be. And you will see that the number of um, jobs or the number of post-secondary educational opportunities uh, with a high school diploma or less, those number of is dramatically shrinking. And the number of that of job positions, a number of career choices that are uh, increasing are those that require a certificate or higher. Um, and so it's it's the same information, a different graph here. But I think this is really critical. Our students, we want to make sure that they're not just falling into the dark blues of high school or less or some college, no degree, because those spaces are actually shrinking. And so our students should be on a pathway to a certificate, uh, associates, a bachelor's, or future beyond. It's, it, it is um, potentially a long pathway, but it's an important one. And I think um, my career and my time, I have focused on access and opportunity for adult learners. And I think that's something that if you're in adult education, that probably resonates with you as well. You want to create an opportunity for a learner that it's um, as seamless as possible. And then the next learner comes and it might be that they come the next program year, but gosh, it's a lot easier to help that learner when you've helped one person and the door has been busted down and the glass ceiling has been broken. Um, and it makes it that much more seamless for other students to see those opportunities. And that's what we're, we're trying to do by this presentation and share this information as well. The last thing that I'll leave you with um, as we think about um, building out our adult student strategy and, and including um, adult learners in this is going back to MCAN's key indicators for college success. So these are indicators that we see with the majority of students and certainly ones that are really um, 
important for adult learners as well. These are the indicators that we say are, if they're in place, the student is on the road to success and they will find the greatest success that they can. Academic readiness. If they're not ready or if there's a gap or a barrier in uh, in between for them in their knowledge uh, set, they they that could position them to not be successful in college. And so academic readiness and having adult education providers know what it is that at college, um, what students will face in college and be a part of that conversation is very critical. And we've got some strategies to think about what that can look like and we'll be introducing those over the next year or so. Obviously affordability, that's a major factor uh, for any learner as they think about it, as they think about pursuing it, how will they pay for it? How will they balance that work life. Um, now more than ever, college is more affordable for the majority of people in Michigan. And my colleagues, Nick and Michelle, are going to talk about that in just a few minutes. And the wonderful opportunities that have been created for adult learners in particular to have college be the most affordable that it's probably ever been in the history of our state. Um, enrollment, we always think about that as well. Uh, one of the things that we um, think about in the enrollment and persistence is MCAN focuses its work on college to and through. Our mission is not just to get more people to go to college, but actually successfully find um, a degree completion pathway in the most efficient way possible for them at the quickest pace, um, at the most affordable, uh, and that works for that learner. And so enrollment and persistence are really key factors for us in that to and through model. We don't want to set learners up for success, not for not having success. We don't, we're not trying to create a pathway here for adult learners to go to college and not be successful. So that persistence piece and that completion piece are really kind of the bookends, if you will, to the enrollment piece that we're also focused on. How do we actually get students um, to finish and through that degree? Uh, and what are the wraparound supports that they need to do that? Completion and attainment are really important to us as well. The number of students that complete and then what is their overall attainment goal? Are our educational systems, are we moving folks through and are we demonstrating that the impact and the investment that we're making both in policy and in funding and in resource building is it making a difference? Are we getting to 60 by 30? What does that look like year over year? And then lastly, kind of the biggest system change piece that we impact is culture. How do we impact the culture so that things begin to change and that learners, when they enter into our programs, they find success and that college is a conversation that you can start having at the very beginning of a program and not just at the end. Um, and so uh, there's a couple of ways in which we'll continue to push this information out. Uh, we're looking forward to presenting at the McKay Conference coming up um, uh, in November. Um, and we'll be introducing some ways in which you as practitioners can be involved with some of this work. We'll be soliciting some um, insights and input into some of the things that we'll be launching very soon. But this is the groundwork for why we feel that it's so important to include adult learners in this landscape and in this space, um, because college is for everyone. And it, there should be an accessible route for all of our adult learners to think about. So I am very happy um, to turn this presentation over to my colleague, Michelle Cyrus, at the Office of 60 by 30, who can really kind of tell us about um, some of the ways in which Michigan has been investing in college for adult learners and what those opportunities are. So I'll turn it over to you, Michelle. Thank you, Patrick. What a wonderful presentation. Um, I hope everyone can hear me just fine this afternoon. And thank you for taking time to um, be a part of this uh, learning opportunity this afternoon. Patrick, next slide, please. Back one. The there we go. There we go. Okay. Um, so as Patrick said, Michelle Cyrus, I am the Student Success Strategy Manager with the Office of 60 by 30, which was um, created really by Governor Whit Whitmer, um, modeled off of the GI Bill that started out with Futures for Front Futures, Futures for... <laughs> 
frontliners um, back in 2019, which kind of morphed into, I mean, in 2020, I'm sorry, which kind of morphed into Michigan Reconnect in uh, February of 2021. And for those of you who might not be familiar, Michigan Reconnect is a tuition-free community college pathway for Michiganders um, right now, those that are 21 and up across the state. And the requirement is not having a degree of any kind, associates or bachelors. And so I'll go on a little bit um, later in this presentation talking about what the requirements for that is, but it is open to all Michiganders. And as Patrick has so eloquently um, indicated that we are trying to reach that 60% by 2030, that all Michiganders will have some type of post-secondary attainment. Next slide, please, Patrick. And since Patrick's already talked about um, the hot 50 jobs, I won't belabor you with that, belabor you with that information um, again, but really want to um, emphasize the importance of that post-secondary attainment. And we realize that everybody may not want to go to college to get an associate's degree, but knowing that everyone can go that chooses within the age demographic um, that Michigan Reconnect supports, that they can get get certificates or stackable certificates. And, and if they, you know, get those certificates and later decide that I want an associates, that's an opportunity for them as well. Individuals have up to four years um, to complete their education using the Michigan Reconnect um, scholarship. Next slide, please. And one of the things that we really want to, um, folks to um, kind of understand how Michiganders see education. I think um, across the country that, you know, we have the conversations around student debt, and that can be a daunting conversation for many people, especially um, when you attend college and your pathway doesn't always align up with um, the education educational opportunity that you have um, chosen, but 26.5% of Michigan voters say college is very important to be successful in the job market. And in the, the same respect, only 27.5 voters said a four-year degree is worth the money. Um, so that, you know, um, is, is what we're seeing across the landscape for, for Michiganders. And then 69% of voters said a high school diploma or certificate or trade um, are at the minimum level of education needed to be successful. And in some respects, the, the first, the second, and the third, it is important to have a college education to find, um, I would call it economic prosperity um, in our state. And I would make the argument, and some would may differ, is that, uh, is it worth the money? But then you have the opportunity to get those certifications and get those trade uh, opportunities, those, those trade jobs that will also propel you into economic prosperity. So it's not like a one size fits all. You just have to find what works best for you in the educational landscape. Next slide, please. And although this is an interactive, I thought it would be great um, to share the Michigan, um, Michigan's current attainment rate um, for the state, considering when we started out, we started out at about 40, 45.1%. And um, since you can't answer this question, I will share that we're at 51.1%. Next slide, please, Patrick. And so as you see here, we have had a 6% gain since 2019. So we are making headway to that 60 by 30, but it takes all of us to be able to do that throughout the state in the educational ecosystem. Next slide. And so just to kind of talk about a little bit of the programs that we offer through Michigan Reconnect. Next slide, please. 
our financial aid programs. So I talked a little bit about Futures for Frontliners, where we had about 85,000 applicants um, when we started that program with 27,000 people enrolling. And we're excited that about 5,200 people took advantage of that in receiving credentials and or associate's degrees. And as I indicated, we mar morphed into uh, Michigan Reconnect. And as of right now, we have about 190,000 applicants. Over 52,000 people are enrolled. And we are excited that we are about 8,000 um, credentials and awards um, 8,000 credentials in associate's degrees that have been awarded to Michiganders. We also have the Michigan Skills Achievement Scholarship that launched in 2023. So that is anyone that has received um, high school diploma or equivalency can take advantage of the Michigan Achievement Skills Scholarship. And Nick will talk a little bit about um, that a little more when he does his presentation. And then we have our Michigan Reconnect short-term training that has been sunsetted. We're excited that we had allocated about $6 million for the Michigan um, Reconnect short-term training program. And it took about, uh, I think it was in about a three month time period, we had exhausted those dollars. We had so many individuals taking advantage of that. So we are really excited um, about how the skills, um, the, the short-term training program um, was such a great opportunity for so many Michiganders. Next slide, please. And when they ask the question of why reconnect, why is Michigan Reconnect in, important? And so we know that it provides the opportunity for people to not only skill, but reskill and upskill. So it's about increasing adult education throughout the state, closing um, the skills gap for Michiganders so they can experience additional economic prosperity. We are excited that with the Michigan Reconnect Scholarship, that within the district, within someone's closest community college, that would mean their tuition, mandatory fees, and contact hours are fully covered to attend that community college. But if individuals live external to the district, outside of that district, we have significantly um, deep discounts for attending um, college. And we want to make sure that with with all of our Michiganders in the state, that they have an opportunity to follow their dreams. Again, using the words being skilled, reskilled, and upskilled to find those better jobs. Next slide, please. In the eligibility for Michigan Reconnect, right now, um, up until December 31st, individuals must be 21 years old, be a Michigan resident for at least a year, have a high school have a high school diploma or equivalency, not have an associate's or a bachelor's in any way. And so for the individuals 21 to 24, they have up until December 31st to complete their application to enroll in um, the Michigan Reconnect Scholarship. But the good news about that is they have um, the 24 and 25 academic year that they can enroll in college. So they have up until the summer semester that they can enroll. And again, with the Michigan Reconnect Scholarship, individuals have four years to complete their education. And with individuals 25 and up, there is no deadline when they can enroll and when they can start college. Next slide, please. So what we have in place is a cadre of navigators that are deployed across the state. We have 10 regular Michigan Reconnect navigators, and then we have three expansion navigators that support Michiganders from corner to corner of the state. And so we also have our College Completion Corps where we've invested about $780,000 and that's working through MCAN, which, um, um, which Patrick kind of talked about a little bit earlier. And so the navigators will help individuals to, again, um, as you see the compass there, navigate, navigate their educational journey. And so they can assist with the college going process. They can help individuals complete um, 
their financial aid application. They can talk with them about exploring degree prospects, um, again, and also like in-demand jobs. So when you're thinking about how your degree can line up with what's available in the workforce, they can have that conversations with you as well. And they work very closely with our community college partners and also community-based organizations as well as our stakeholders throughout the state. Um, and they can just be an, an overall sounding board to help you through um, some of the barriers that you may, uh, that people may um, experience and provide those wraparound supports for them. Next slide, please, Patrick. And then here we have, you can scan that QR code and that way you can get into um, our champion toolkit and download any of our marketing materials that you would like to share um, within the communities of the individuals that you support. And we can also mail um, hard copies of any flyers or information um, that you would like. In that toolkit, there are um, sample emails, there are social media um, components that you can add to if you have Facebook or um, Instagram or Snapchat or TikTok, you can add it to, to those social media platforms. And we have presentations in there as well. And we also are available to do presentations to any communities or any individuals that you would like us to do around the state. We are available um, to do that. We have a a form that we can also um, send out that you can request a presentation or a speaker around Michigan Reconnect. And also I want to um, elevate the fact that on our Michigan Reconnect page, if you have individuals that just aren't sure if they're ready to complete the Michigan Reconnect application, they just have some more questions or really want to have a deeper in-depth conversation with someone about that college going process. We have an interest form that is on our page that I will drop in the, the chat today um, that you can share and utilize um, for individuals that you're working with. Um, Patrick, next slide, please. And again, I just want to um, just highlight the fact that the 60 by 30, the goal is to um, help individuals um, reach their educational uh, goals and economic prosperity. And so that's through families, business, and communities, because we know um, with the more educated populace comes more jobs to our great state and also puts, you know, hopefully in this process, we can't be definitive about, about this, but we would say put more money in Michigander's pockets. And what I wanna do now is just take a few moments and share with you, um, our graduation that we recently had um, in the um, in the summer in the in the um, spring semester, and so Patrick, if you could please play that, I'd appreciate it. all know that the team here in the Office of 60 by 30, we are here to support Michiganders in any way we can um, to, to, um, 
to have the actualization of their educational goals met, but also, however, we can support you all to be able to share that information out to let folks know that um, there's access and opportunity. And right now, I'd like to turn it over to my colleague, Nick, and he will talk about a few of the other um, financial aid scholarship programs that we offer through the state of Michigan. And thank you for giving me time today. Welcome everyone on behalf of the My Student Aid Programs, a part of the Office of Higher Education at the State of Michigan. I, my name is Nick Messing. I'm the Northern Michigan Outreach Representative. Um, so thank you for inviting me in today to present on uh, the family of programs that's called the Michigan Achievement Scholarship. Uh, Michigan Achievement, this is, this is our big news in the last two years. Uh, just a, about a year and a half ago, this rolled out. Um, it is the largest investment the state of Michigan has ever made in higher education funding. It can be full or partial funding awarded along with other state of Michigan aid programs and federal aid programs such as PEL. So they do work together and collaborate together to bring costs down further and further, which is definitely helping our students have more choice and have more option to reduce student loan debt. We are seeing a major impact on borrowing already um, just in the last two years. So th this is a good thing and we're moving in the right direction. Uh, Michigan Reconnect funding supports both skill attainment and training and multiple types of traditional college pathways. The eligibility requirements. There are a couple of paths through this particular funding and we're gonna look at those individually here in a moment, but what do they have in common? Uh, students must be a Michigan resident and a U.S. citizen, permanent resident, or approved refugee. So it's important that they maintain that Michigan residency status. They need to have graduated from a Michigan high school or an equivalent, such as GED or Certificate of Achievement, in 2023 or after, and enroll full-time. So I know uh, just listening to Michelle's presentation with Reconnect. Reconnect can accommodate uh, the part-time schedules uh, a little more. Michigan Achievement Funding, as we walk through the next couple of pathways and, and options, it is expecting full-time uh, as an enrollment level. So with, with our adult learners, perhaps full-time is an option and an interest, um, but perhaps it is not. So I just wanna recognize this, the next couple of uh, slides that we cover are programs that require full-time enrollment um, as an undergrad student, and whether that's certificate level, associate's degree, or bachelor's uh, attainment. Now, our, our graduates need to initiate, activate this funding at an institution within Michigan within 15 months. So they do have a little bit of a, a, a time clock uh, ticking that they do need to be enrolled and, and actively using this funding within 15 months to lock in their eligibility and have that be available. Um, and so you can see there, our class of 23 graduates needed to be enrolled full-time, no later than fall of 24, the current semester. Our 24 grads from this past year uh, need to enroll by next fall at the latest, fall 25. and our current senior class in, in the high schools, uh, class of 25, they have until fall of 26 to engage and enroll as a full-time student and begin using the program funding in order to have access to it from that point forward. Also, they, they cannot be in default on a federal student loan. We look at this as a choose your pathway uh, approach. Michigan Achievement Scholarship funding is, is the general um, pot of funding available, but there are multiple ways to tap into this or multiple ways to move through and utilize this funding. And none of them are exclusive. So a student can utilize two of the three, three of the three, or just one of the three, uh, whatever works best for them. And so we're gonna look at each of these in detail now as we move forward. So the Community College Guarantee, it allows, once activated and initiated, it allows five academic years worth of funding. And so we have to keep that perspective in mind that at most, whatever they do, whatever pathway they take, they can't total more than five years of funding. 
So just keep that perspective in mind. But this allows maximum flexibility. A student could start at a community college or a tribal college and stop there with a certificate or an associate's degree, or they can continue on and transfer up to a four-year school, or they can earn that certificate or associates and, and then join the workforce if that is their goal. So it does accommodate what the student's interests and goals are. To qualify, they do need to complete a FAFSA application. There's, there's no separate application to complete um, for the community college guarantee. They must enroll full-time at a participating Michigan community or tribal college within the 15 months. And then what does it offer? It offers all Michigan high school graduates, class of 2023 and beyond, three academic years of funding, regardless of the family income. So I tell students all the time, you basically have three school years at the community college level of full-time enrollment available for full coverage or nearly full coverage, regardless of whether your family makes a little or a lot. This has now become the safety net that all of our students and, and graduates um, can lean in on if they need at least one extremely affordable option. So again, there's just the reminder of when they need to initiate and be enrolled in order to activate the funding, but they have essentially three academic years of full-time enrollment available through community college guarantee. The guarantee covers the cost of in-district tuition at participating community colleges and tribal colleges. It can also go further and cover contact hour charges and mandatory fees. And we know the contact hour charges can be significant for students that may be in some hands-on uh, programs like culinary or cosmetology, skilled trades, or healthcare programs. They have a lot of that contact hour cost. And so Michigan Community College Guarantee will make sure that that equivalent in-district rate is covered and contact our costs and mandatory fees. This would also allow them the option to have a $1,000 Michigan Achievement Bonus if they have been offered any Pell Grant funding that year. So being Pell eligible through the federal sources um, also triggers an additional $1,000 through the Michigan Achievement as the Michigan Achievement Bonus. And that additional 1,000 can be applied towards the out of district upcharge that may be occurring if they're out of district. It can be applied towards books. It could be used for transportation cost. Whatever that student needs that additional funding for, um, it can be used for those costs within their total budget. Next slide. So we just mentioned about out of district. And so what if a student is out of district at a community college? Because many students across the state do not have a in-district option. They're, they're out of district everywhere at all the community colleges. Now, if you are out of district at the community college, um, this is still a deep discount, a, still a significant portion of the tuition cost covered. Um, Patrick, go ahead and click once. So for example, if a student in an out-of-district scenario is being charged 150 for their credit hours, um, but the in-district value, the in-district rate was set at $100 at that school, then that means 100 of the 150 would be covered through the community college guarantee, which would leave the other remaining 50, that upcharge for the out-of-district scenario, to be handled another way. Maybe maybe their Pell Grant funding would be large enough to tackle that additional cost. Maybe if they have tuition incentive program or TIP funding, uh, maybe they have outside scholarship that they have access to um, through a sort, another source, or they could rely on some loan funding um, to help tackle those costs as well. So the student will have different options in order to help tackle that upcharge for out of district. But Community College Guarantee will still handle a large proportion of that cost for students. Now, what if a student was enrolled in an early middle college 
Um, and with the, our, our adult ed population, that may be um, possible, but maybe more rare. But I still want you to be aware that this is an option out there for students. Um, so just in general, students that do complete an early middle college program and earn an associate's degree that way, they are not limited. They can pursue another um, avenue for a certificate program or another second associate's degree using the community college guarantee funding. So earning an associate's through early middle college doesn't prevent them from engaging with and utilizing the community college guarantee program to earn another separate certificate or another associates. And so that's a good thing to, to give those students that choice if they want to go in a different direction, but they're not necessarily interested in a bachelor's level degree program. Next slide. Now we're gonna shift gears to the second pathway. So this is the Michigan Achievement Scholarship funding at our four-year public and four-year private universities. Michigan high school graduates, class of 23 and later, have to demonstrate need for the four-year public and private Michigan Achievement Funding. They do that by having a student aid index result on their FAFSA application of 30,000 or less. And so that 30,000 or less results, uh, student aid index number on the FAFSA is the trigger to put the student into eligibility for the uh, four-year public or private Michigan Achievement Scholarship funding. So you do have to do that FAFSA and submit it to the schools through the, through the schools so that they can see what the student aid index number is to determine whether they qualify. Again, just a reminder, it's going to require full-time enrollment. So just keeping that in perspective. Next slide. The details of the four-year funding option, it's up to 5,500 per year that can be used towards any cost of attendance. So whether it's tuition, fees, room and board, books, supplies, transportation, or miscellaneous personal expenses, as long as it fits within that financial aid cost of attendance or budget for the year, then they would be able to receive that funding. So up to 5,500 per year, and it is renewable for up to five years worth. So if the student is only ever enrolled in and attending a four-year school, they can utilize this for up to a maximum of the five-year total. So we're back to quoting that five-year limit. Um, what does that add up to in five years? That's 27500 towards a bachelor's degree. And now the third pathway, the career training or skills pathway. Uh, there is no FAFSA needed for this particular pathway, so that is a unique feature of this, but they do need to complete a separate application through our student portal, and we'll see that next. They do, again, need to be, be and continue to be a Michigan um, resident, high school graduate, class of 23 and beyond, not having earned a certificate or a degree yet at this point. They can receive up to 2000 per year for a maximum of two years. So a student might opt to take this route and then continue on through another of the three pathways, community college guarantee or the four-year pathway if they choose to continue further. Next slide. So that application they don't have to do the FAFSA, but we do encourage a FAFSA to be completed so the student can be considered for federal aid like Pell Grant and loan funding if they needed that, but they don't have to. Um, in order to apply for this program funding and to look at the eligible training providers, students can go out on michigan.gov slash career training. There are hundreds of providers pre-approved out there um, across the state of Michigan. You can filter by um, occupation area or you can filter by county um, or combination of those in order to see local options for your students, which is very handy. Students can apply to participate in the Skills Scholarship through the MySSG uh, Student Aid Portal. Applicants for the 25-26 uh, school year are 25 high school grads. 
Um, that application will open on January 1st. So it's not open yet for our current senior class uh, that's in high school or, or completing GED um, in the in the 2025, 2024 academic year. Um, but the application will be uh, brought out on January 1st. So it'll be available for those to apply to utilize the funding in 2526. Upon completion of a career training certificate, again, those students can continue up through another pathway using um, the remainder of that five-year limit on the community college and uh, Michigan Achievement Scholarship funding. Next slide. We've got a lot of detail that we offer about these programs. This is a very high level, very quick uh, summary of the details. But if you jump out on michigan.gov slash achievement, you'll find the full program details, frequently asked questions. There's a lot of scenario-based questions out there that are extremely handy to know, both for those counseling students and for the students themselves to, to be able to navigate the program features. Um, we do have a toolkit out on our website, and I'm actually gonna put that into the chat right now. So that link to the toolkit is available and you'll have social media um, social media posts that you can just copy and paste out on your social media accounts. There's links to PDF links to flyers that you can print and use or distribute the PDF electronically to your students. Um, so there's just lots of resources there to help you communicate this out to the audience of students that will benefit from knowing this. Um, our, all of our programs, we've focused on the Michigan Achievement Funding uh, today, but all of our programs, all 10 of them, are summarized out on michigan.gov slash mystudentaid. Our student and family page has the details for all programs out there, and so a student can follow out there, or a counselor can follow our webpage on the counselor tab. Each of them have their respective uh, program link page out there, leading to all 10 of our programs fully described. Next slide, Patrick. We're going to transition back, I believe, um, to either Erica or Patrick to moderate the Q&A portion of the webinar today. So I know we have just a few more minutes, but I know they've been collecting some Q&As. Great. Thank you, Nick. Thank you, Michelle and Patrick, also for wonderful presentations. Um, there are a few questions in the chat. Um, it looks like many have been answered. So thank you, Michelle. And I think Christy Nelson also jumped in um, to answer a few. But I want to make sure if I kind of start back. Um, there was a question for the link to community presentation request. So Michelle, I think you had mentioned that that was um, something that was available. And so I didn't know if there was a link where folks could access that. Request. Yes, I've already put it in the chat. Oh, you did put, okay. That was the same for the scholarship interest form. Was that correct? Um, no, I put a link in if they want to request um, a speaker or a presentation. Oh, perfect. I missed yep. that. So thank you. No worries. <laughs> thank you for answering that one. All right. Okay, and she says... Someone said the Michigan Reconnect link does not work. Jenny? The events one. Okay. Oh, the events one. Okay. Yep. Oh, I do see that there. Yes. Well, while we're looking at that one, there was also um, a question in if I missed the answer to this, please let me know. Um, if a student wants to attend a post-secondary school to lead to an associate or bachelor degree, which of these scholarships should be encouraged? So I think, Nick, that was in your section there. If the student's main interest is um, bachelor's level, then they do have the option. They've got different routes forward, obviously either starting through a community college and utilizing the generous community college guarantee first. So they could use that up to three years worth, but if they only chose to use one year or two, then of course that's their option. Um, and then once they reach the four year school, so for their junior, senior year coursework, um, then it would transition over 
and become based on that student aid index result from the FAFSA as, as long as they demonstrated a student aid index of 30,000 or below, then they could continue to tap into the Michigan Achievement Funding as a source. And that could be up to 5,500 per year towards costs associated with continuing to enroll as a full-time student. Great, thank you. You're welcome. Or they can go straight to the four-year school as a freshman and stay there the entire duration and, and use that 5,500 each of the years. So they've, they've got that flexibility. They can mix and match programs through Michigan Achievement, or they can do exclusively just the four-year Michigan Achievement funding. Um, there is another question here um, from Christy asking, is the funding noted in this presentation guaranteed even with a change in state leadership? Go ahead, well, Michelle or Nick, if that's something that either of you want to touch on um, for the legislation. The, all of our state aid programs do have the caveat of subject to annual budget approval. So that is normal. That has been there forever. Um, but there is a significant amount of funding reserve set aside, earmarked for Michigan Achievement Scholarship. And so um, absent any drastic changes in the budget approval process, those funds are there waiting. And, and we're planning and communicating to students that this will be an option um, based on our current understanding. It's going to be an option for our all of our high school kids and, and GED completers and middle schoolers and even our K-12, our all of our K-12 kids. This is intended to be ongoing um, with a life of its own. I mean, within that parameter of subject to annual budget approval. So our confidence in it Perfect. is high. Okay. Thank you for that, Nick. You're welcome. Um, I see, Jenny, you have your hand raised. You can go ahead and come off mute if you'd like to answer a question, if you want to clarify anything. Thank you, guys. I appreciate it. Wonderful uh, webinar. Really appreciate it. Uh, I'm from Sisters Reaching Out. We're here uh, in the city of Detroit, and our program has programming that specifically works with non-traditional uh, students in regards to pursuit of uh, higher ed and um, attainment. There are two things. I have been for the last two years trying to get data from Michigan Reconnect because we need to know for our purposes, for our outreach to our community, how many are actually taking advantage, how many eligible adults in the city of Detroit are taking advantage of Mich Michigan Reconnect. Haven't gotten that data yet. We did some ad hoc calculations from data we extrapolated from what's online, and we figured, and it could be wrong, that less than 4% of eligible Detroiters are taking advantage of Mich Michigan Reconnect. Now, we don't know why that is. We don't know if the information that's coming from the state is in reaching that last mile, but again, data, data, data will help us understand what's going on there so we can refine our outreach. So is it possible that you guys can share raw data with us in a timely manner so it can inform us of how we can help the outreach process for these programs, in particular Michigan Reconnect? That's the first thing, a data quarter if possible. The second thing is, because we're working with a non-traditional population of students here in Detroit, we built partnerships to create pipelines from our program directly to college institutions that we are immediately in our community. For instance, Wayne State, Wayne County uh, Community College, uh, Dearborn. With the Michigan Reconnect program not being eligible at four-year institutions is hampering our efforts to help these individuals that we are endeavoring to serve. Because in the partnerships that we form with these institutions, they go directly from us to potentially a four-year program where if they can get the Michigan Reconnect, that's two years, and then the institution will support the remaining two years. If they don't have that option, they can't take advantage of that phenomenal opportunity. So we really do need some, um, if there can be some discussion around the Michigan Reconnect being offered just flat out two-year college tuition assistant at any public university or private university, that would be helpful for us, again, in meeting the population that typically goes underserved and it's typically under-resourced. So those are the two things. The big one is the data for us, being an uh, on-the-ground, boots-on-the-ground community uh, 
uh, program or pro pro provider, and then some discussion around the Michigan Reconnect for this non-traditional population that we're serving. Thanks, I appreciate it. Michelle, so around the, I'm sorry. Oh, go ahead. Michelle, I was going to say, I can suggest and offer a link to the Data Sharing Center, but I know that is gets got all of our programs but not reconnect. And, and I don't know if your reconnect data is elsewhere on the website, but I can put the other data center um, link in the in the chat real quick. So if you can talk to the reconnect side of it, that would help. Yes, so I'm going to put in the chat, um, the reconnect data dashboard um, that you can go out, drop that in the chat right now. Hard having one screen here, just a second. And what I can also do is, um, that's the link to the data dashboard for Michigan Reconnect. And I can also put my information, my email information in the chat, which will also be on the following slide. Um, and you can email me and I can connect you with our data analysts and we can see how we can um, assist you further in wanting additional data if you don't find what you want out, out on our data dashboard. I might add to that, Michelle, and also say that um, MCAN houses a what is called the impact map. Um, and so we have a data um, hub on our MCAN website as well, different than what Nick and Michelle's data impact maps or data resource centers are describing, but the MCAN impact map um, gives a snapshot of the current credential attainment according to either a county or um, like a school district. And so if you're interested in that kind of data around what is the current levels um, within a particular area and would like to dig into like the current landscape snapshot, um, it also lists what are resources within those areas and what are the connecting like um, partnerships as we work with MyLeap and we work with um, Leo and we work with the Office of 60 by 30. What are the resources available in those communities as well to help um, mitigate and increase um, the credential attainment uh, positioning there? So that is something that um, we'll make sure that we share out in addition to Nick and Michelle's resources as we um, give everyone the slides and, and things as well in a follow up. Great question. All right, there's a couple other questions that have been posted in. Um, so one is a question looks like a student who it says is unable to log in. So I'm assuming maybe accessing the application. Um, the reason they is they're unable is they're being told they already have an account for Michigan Reconnect. So is there a email or a link or a phone number that we would direct those students to? Yes, and I can put that in the chat. Perfect. Thank you, Michelle. Um, question, I think, Nick, for you regarding the eligible career training programs for the 24-25 academic year and when they'll be posted for the Michigan Achievement Scholarship, um, the training options listed still show 23-24. So are those the same? Or... And Michelle can correct me if I misheard or I'm, I'm incorrect, but I did hear um, just this morning that the, they're in the progress or they're in the process of um, the final stages of, of updating those through the website. And so um, sounds like within the next several weeks, that should be <clears throat> updated to reflect the new academic year for the approved providers. Is that your understanding too, Michelle? Yes. Okay. Awesome. Perfect. Thank you. Um, clarification for the career training program, are the stipulations the same for the Michigan Achievement Award where you have to have graduated um, in 2023 or after? Yes. All, yes, all three of the pathways share that in common, that it's the 23 graduating class or later. Um, they all require full-time enrollment, um, <clears throat> and so they have a Michigan residency, and, and all of those are common uh, factors for any of those three pathways through the, the, community, the community college guarantee, the Michigan Achievement at four years, or the Michigan Achievement Skills pathway. All have those same things in common. Great, thank you, Nick. 
Um, and just to to reemphasize, because I saw it questioned a couple of times, we will absolutely be sharing um, the slides from today as well as the recording. Uh, we'll send those out for the same way that the um, through the same listserv that the um, registration and webinar information was sent out to. So everyone that received the information to register and the announcement of the webinar will receive the PowerPoint or the um, slide deck from today as well as the recording. recording. And Erica, yeah, I'll just I'll amend my last answer to also go further and clarify. When we say you know has to be a graduate in 2023, that could be high school diploma earner, that could be GED completion, that could be certificate of achievement completion. Any of those um, would the student would qualify regardless of age. See that the one factor with reconnect is there there it's more focused on age group, you know, 25 and up or currently 21 and up with Michigan Achievement Scholarships. I never mentioned an age. It, is, it has nothing to do with a student's age whatsoever. So if you have someone completing their GED or high school diploma at 60 years old, they could use Michigan Achievement Scholarship. There's no age requirements around that, but there are the, the full-time enrollment requirement and the Michigan residency requirement. Um, and the graduation GED or, or achievement uh, certificate of achievement earning requirements. And, and I did wanna um, also say that um, one thing I didn't mention is the FAFSA for Michigan Reconnect um, does have to be completed, not for the purposes of student loans, but we always say for the purpose of the seat, purposes of um, indicating if you're leaving any money on the table, what colleges might have available for you in the, that financial realm. But the difference between um, us and some of the other uh, scholarship opportunities with the state is if you are in default of your federal student loans, you still can take advantage of Michigan Reconnect. And so I think a lot of people aren't quite aware of that. So I definitely wanted to um, elevate that um, for you all around with, with both of those issues. Thank if I can add one, oh, oh, if I can ahead, add one thing to that, Erica, um, I think that's really significant what Nick and Michelle both said about the, you know, both by age and by graduating class. Um, many of you on the call as adult education practitioners interface with a number of adults that come into adult education for a variety of reasons, whether they choose to enroll in services or whether they um, find that you're a very helpful resource to them. But also you have graduating um, adult education uh, folks who are constantly reconnecting and re-engaging in some way with your programs. And so um, as you do that outreach that's, you know, important within that adult education community, I think that that's really critical that you may um, find that there are students that you've served that are now, you know, uh, you're a trusted resource for them. And so um, we've Part of uh, why we wanted to share this information is because we know that you get those questions all the time. You see someone that graduated last year that's coming back and set, and you want to check in with them or that you're doing that follow up for data collection on the adult education side and your staff are engaging in those conversations. This is an avenue and a way in which we, we know that that person to person contact is going to be really critical to help share this information about reconnect and the achievement scholarship and what are the things that are available to adult learners. So I just wanted to raise that up as many of you engage with adult learners that you have currently enrolled or that were previously enrolled or that are re-engaging or previous graduates or even folks that, you know, either by the class or by the age, may be eligible, eligible for a lot of these resources um, and want you to have the knowledge to be able to help them as they begin that process. Perfect. Thank you, Patrick. Yeah, and absolutely. And and that's, you know, really the emphasis and the reason for today is to better support our adult learners. And so hopefully everyone that was able to join us today feels more informed um, and has a good handle on these different supports and scholarships and resources and is able to, to pass those along and share those with the students in your program. Um, I just want to sincerely thank Patrick, Michelle, and Nick, again, for your time and sharing your expertise with us this afternoon. This has been so helpful. I continue to learn something every time that I sit and listen. Um, and so really appreciate you sharing with all of us today. 
Um, and again, for all of those that joined today, look for um, a copy of the slide deck and the, the recording to come your way. Um, so if there isn't anything else that anyone wants to add, I just wanted to thank you again for your time today um, and look for more information to be coming from us and we'll continue this conversation. Erica, I did put an updated um, sure. link in the chat for event request. Perfect. Thank you so much, Michelle. You're welcome. Thank you all.